we're back in Midland, Texas, where we were about a year ago. This won't be your normal barn find hunter episode. It's gonna be better than that. This is gonna be the best barn find story ever told. There's got so many moving pieces of this story. It was just a year ago. You re may remember our Midland, Texas episode from last year, but if you don't remember it, go to Barn Find Hunter episode 34. We were in this yard looking at this field of pretty solid cars, and, and, and I actually really fell in love with this one, a 1960 Ford two-door station wagon. You know I'm a Ford guy, you know I'm a, a wagon guy, and two-door wagons are even better. But there was another wagon that was over here that got my attention. I, I think it was probably right here. Yeah, that's a solid body, you know. How many wagons can I have though? I, I have to walk by it. And I kept on going back to that wagon and there was something solid about it. So the owner, Tom Cross, I said, Tom, you have compound and a rag? It was kind of dingy like this, you know, like kind of dingy desert dirt. And I polished a little piece of the fender. You might remember it. Polished a little piece of the fender and it shined. So that 1962 paint on this wagon still shined like, like it was brand new. And I said, Tom, I wish I had a buffer out here. I'd like to buff this whole fender out. And Tom said, well, I have a buffer, but I don't have an extension cord this long, but let me figure something out. And boom, he fires up his forklift and comes over and moves the car over there and moves the car over there and picks his car up and brings it to the shop. And then we hooked up the buffer and I buffed out this fender. Oh my goodness, this car is, is too good to be thrown away. And Tom was getting ready to crush these cars. He said, I've had them here for 30 years. So, you know, ha having spent time buffing out this little piece of the fender, then having spent time buffing out the complete front fender, this car was talking to me. And, and this car had good bones. And this, this, this car, I couldn't get out of my mind. So on the way home and over the next couple of days, I thought about it. And we decided we'll just make a project car out of this. We'll take a car that we find in a Barn Find Hunter episode and, and kind of bring you along for the ride, showing you that cars can be found, purchased, and worked on and enjoyed for under market value. So we came here over the winter time. Right now it's, it's spring and it's getting warm. It's gonna be 92 today. We were here when it was 20 and 30 degrees in the winter time. Thankfully, we're working inside a shop. The handy thing about here is that every part we needed was in that yard. We, didn't have, we had to hardly buy anything except for, well, new bearings for the wheels, new brakes, tie rod ends, ball joints, that, those kind of things. So it's handy when you have your own parts department. Now here's one of the parts cars, 62 Ford Galaxy we used for the dashboard wiring harness. Uh, here's another car we used for some brake parts. So thankfully, these 62 Fords are just lying around. So a project like this, you know, can't even be attempted unless you've got really good partners helping out. And we have a good partner, Mr. Tom Cross, who we just met by accident, riding down the road in the woody right down that road and saw a field of cars and knocked on his door and he said yeah you know come on in and so Tom has been a uh, an active uh, participant and partner in a project of taking that junkyard wagon and turning it into something pretty special so how many people helped you with this project well with all the sponsors and everything we probably had uh 12 to 15 people I had two of my good friends that put a lot of hours in it with me uh -huh. um, you know, it was just a group effort. Went really well. Yep. Well, let's let's show let's show these people what what this has turned into. So this is original 1962 paint, but you can tell this car now has wheels, it has tires, it has an interior, it has an engine, it has a transmission, it has repaired floors, it's got shiny chrome, and most all the parts were sourced from the yard right back here. Look at this thing. Is that amazing? These are some of the sponsors, uh, many of which are Tom's good friends, that helped out with radiators and batteries, wheels, tires these individuals gave their time to this project it, it wouldn't be looking like this without their help to check this engine out now if you remember when this car was sitting out in the field all those years it had no engine 
more transmission. I'm going to show you what it, show you what it looks like now. Now this is not a factory piece. This wooden pole just is helping because the springs that hold the hood are a little bit worn out. But here is a very nicely built 390 that was built by a friend of Tom's here in town, and it puts out about 325 horsepower. Sweet idling, sweet running car, of which Tom gave us one, and it was cracked. Gave us another one, and it was cracked. Gave us another one, and it was cracked. And this is the fourth one, and it wasn't cracked, and it, it runs sweet. It's got a four barrel Holly, what a five? 650, it's got 650 on 650 it. 650 Holly. Um, Tell us about the, your, your friends in the Street Ride Club, what they gave us. Uh, West Texas Street Ride Association donated the front brake, disc brake conversion kit for it with the master cylinder. One of the guys in the club donated the uh, billet uh, air cleaner for it. Okay, so basically from axle to axle, this car is brand new. Bearings, brakes, uh, engine, transmission, master cylinder. We had all the wiring out of the car. Uh, everything in the car works. All the accessories work. You know, it's just uh, it's a good running, going down the road old car. A lot of the glass, now this, we had to take the windshield out. We took, these things were not even in, this side, these quarter windows. Uh, a couple of the guys from McPherson College, Austin and Dalton came in here, and they, they made their own gasket over here, which looks kind of factory, out of black silicone. And they did such a great job putting these in. These are, these are tinted, and these were out of a 64 donor wagon that was in the back. That car donated quite a few pieces, including, thankfully, the glass. Um, the rear end we had out, it's got new rear brakes. Bearings, seals, everything. The whole rear end is new. Is that a Ford 9-inch? It's a Ford 9-inch, 356 gear. Yep. Now, we didn't make any attempt to, you know, fix the body. It is what it is. It's a 62 Ford. I mean, so that makes it uh, 57 years old, I guess. The tailgate was real raunchy when we, when we got it. Uh, it had, the window was broken out of it. Oh, yeah, blowing the dust out. <laughs> yeah, you've got that video on your phone, too, right? It's got such nice spring loading in there right now. Now, if I'm not mistaken, there's a spring on the other end of this. Right? Two springs. Is that right? Now, check this out. This is the original Ford piece. This is how you kept the spare tire cover open. It wasn't hydraulics or clicking little mechanisms. It was made by Ford to hold it up to the, the rain gutter. Just amazing stuff. So you can see how solid this all is right now. Tom did an amazing job. It's all Rust-Oleum. It's got Dynamat, sound deadening and heat prevention. And then it was covered in the same fabric we covered the seats with, Mexican blanket. What a blast. Had to put a touch of Texas in it, you know. Touch of Texas, Just right. Just had to. But yep. uh, all the glass in the back of this car is out of a 64 wagon, which was a donor wagon for the floorboards for the spare tire portion of it and the rear glass because this car did not have a rear glass in it either. We had to make some alterations in the tailgate to make that work, but that, that come out fine. Uh, I was able to find a set of NOS, basically Fairlane, because this is a country sedan, <clears throat> and we were basically able to do that. So if you remember from the original episode, this top was pretty rusty. When we came here in the wintertime to work on this car with some McPherson College students who volunteered a week to come down, our intention was to paint this top white, which is what it would have originally been painted. So we sanded it down, and then the students said, this is kind of cool, why don't we just clear over the rust? And here it is, a rusty top that's been cleared over. It's kind of a, a satin clear. They mixed uh, cornstarch corn starch with it, which is apparently an old hot rod trick of keeping it duller. So it's a little bit duller. It almost looks like leather. Uh, so it's a nice compliment, and, and it shows that the car is just not too pretty. We don't make it too pretty, and a white top would have made it a little bit too pretty. So you can take a look at this, this top. Uh, buffed out this, and, you know, I'm not a buffer, so I burned through the paint in a couple of areas. Oh, well, I tried. What I really dig is, you know, Tom went through this dashboard, literally had the dashboard out of the car, went through the gauges, went through all the switches, uh, the radio works, all the... Every, I mean, I'm talking that the, the interior dome light works, which is on right now. Check that out. And the seat, Tom used some um, foam padding he had and uh, made a, a, a structurally sound padded seat and then brought it to a friend. What's your friend's name? Gus. Gus. Ramirez. And Gus got this Mexican blanket and stitched it into a seat cover. 
What could be more perfect? So these seat belts are Simpsons racing seat belts out of a race car. I race a car. When seat belts get to be a couple of years old, they won't pass tech inspection anymore. But they're still fine. So they're sitting on the shelf at home. I said, so, well, let's put, them, let's put them in the wagon. So this wagon has seat belts that have uh, been in my Corvette at 150 miles an hour. So we'll, we'll see. We'll see how fast we can get this going across Texas in a couple hours. You've seen me for four years walking around looking at cars saying, yeah, this is good, this is good, I would do this, I would do that. We actually did it with this car. We actually, you know, made a project car out of it. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you how the economics worked on this. In, in hard cash, we've got $8,000 in this car, but Tom figured out that with all the sponsors that were involved with this car, we probably have $15,000 invested in this car right now. And I'm guessing that's about the market value of this car. You could probably sell this thing maybe for that, around that money, which means you could still go out and find a car, and if you roll up your sleeves and do some hard work, you could build a car that you won't be upside down in, which is unusual these days. You know, we've mentioned McPherson College, students coming here to work on the car over the winter. There's some decals on the car. We should. We should mention why McPherson is involved with this car. McPherson College in Kansas offers a four-year bachelor's program in automotive restoration. And so it's part of the business school. So students have to take accounting classes and bookkeeping and all their electives like they normally would if they were going for any other business degree. But they also have to learn auto upholstery, machining, engine building, metal working, all the, all the various disciplines of auto restoration. And so when they leave there, they're not only auto restorers, but they also have the business background to open a shop one day. And they get hired by shops, Paul Russell, uh, Ralph Lauren, the Peterson Museum. They go to work at collections around the country. Just amazing the, the placement they get. They have a sh an old shop truck, it's an old Chevy pickup, an old Chevy Love, I think it is. It's only running on three cylinders, and it's really a piece of junk. So we decided to donate this car to McPherson College as their parts chaser, as their uh, something to go to the junkyard with to buy parts or go to an auto parts store, pick up parts so the students don't have to drive their own car. This will be their new parts chaser and replace the Chevy pickup. So we're going to drive this car from Midland, Texas, where we are now, to McPherson, Kansas, but we're going to take the slow way. We're going to take back roads and we're going to be looking for barn find cars for new episodes of Barn Find Hunter while we're driving a barn find car. You ready to hit the road? I'm ready. Tom has donated a, a 1962 Texas license plate. Now once we get to, once we go into Lubbock, there's a place called Cook's on the left hand side, you can see a bunch of signs. They've got functions going on out there all the time, bands and things like that. They do a lot of rat rod shows and stuff in there. And maybe something you can get off there and talk to somebody. But I think just get out of here and get to Lubbock first okay. and then take it from there. Okie dokie. Big block Chevy, 454, isn't that something? So for 500 bucks, you can get the drivetrain out of this thing. Let's see what this one is. Big block, 454, isn't that something? We've been doing this program now for four years and we've yet to find a judge. Now tell me this is not a real judge. It's a real judge. All right, so this building looks pretty appetizing here. Is, is there anything in there? Yeah, you're not gonna believe this one. Nobody believes it. Really? Come on. That's the rarest car I've got. The white one. Don't tell me what it is. It's a Superbird? All right, we've got to go now, boys. Holy mackerel. Jeez.
just so you know that we didn't pick the last good car that Tom Cross had in his yard here. There's other good cars to be had, and I just want to point out a couple. Here's a uh, Ford Fairlane, 1963 Fairlane. It's got a 260 V8. It's got the sport roof, which means it's a two-door hardtop. And this is a solid car, and Tom wants to sell it. Here's a 1960 Ford two-door hardtop that has surface rust, much like the wagon that we're going to be driving to uh, Kansas in a little while. This could be sanded off and, and, and clear coated. Tom said this is a solid body, solid floor. He wants to sell this car. So even in this yard, there are more project car possibilities. We only chose one of them. Maybe one of these is made for you. see it go. <laughs> <laughs> Don't cry, buddy. <laughs> I'll tell you, it's been a it's been a trip. It really has. Like